Hey everyone, Chan here and welcome to my channel. Now for today's video, I'm gonna ramble on a little bit. But here's the thing, I'm gonna start off with this. This is by far my favorite television quote of all time, right? See if you guys can guess where this came from or have you heard it before. The quote is very simple. Make the plan, execute the plan, expect the plan to go off the rails, throw away the plan. Now, I think this is a wonderful and an amazing quote because guess what? When it comes to problem solving in general, and especially in math, it actually goes through phases that are very similar to this. There's the phase one, where you make the plan. There's the phase two, where you actually execute it. The phase three, and I'll explain in more details, you expect the plan to go off the rails, and guess what? Every now and then, you will go to phase four, where you basically throw away the plan. So I'm gonna go into details of each and every one of these phases, but I think they are wonderful mentality wonderful ways to approach any math problem that you will ever encounter in your studies. So let's begin with phase one. All right, so for the first phase, it's making the plan. Now, when you're in this phase, there's two components you have to focus on, understanding the problem and then creating the actual plan. So just like if you're going on vacation or whatsoever, you don't just jump right in vacation, boom, there it is. You actually usually have a detailed plan, if not at least a generalized outline of what you're gonna do. At least what flight are you gonna take, right? How long is that gonna take? Where are you gonna live at night, right? Where are you gonna eat? What are you gonna do? Are you gonna visit a landmark whatsoever, right? That's what you usually do when you go on vacation. Guess what? When you are solving a problem, you should put at least the same amount of effort in understanding the situation and then creating a plan. Just like when Abraham Lincoln said, if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I will spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. That's what you need to do with this phase. This should take up the bulk of your time because you're gonna plan and understand everything before you even start trying to solve the problem. So. First component, understanding the problem. So what does it mean? What is the problem asking? What are the data they are giving me? What are the boundaries? What am I allowed to do? What am I not allowed to do, right? With the information, am I missing any information? If I am, how am I gonna go about getting that information? If I'm not missing any information, well, that's a completely different approach, right? Well, with all these data, do I need to draw pictures? Do I need to make tables? I need to truly understand what it's asking. That's the first part. The second part is to actually create the plan. After you truly understand everything, all right, now I need to find a way to approach into solving this problem, right? Is it a similar problem that I've seen before? Is it exactly the same problem I've seen before? Because guess what? It's really rare that we have a completely new math problems. It's usually a variation, different numbers of something that you've seen before or something that exists, right? We don't create something new every single time. It might be even a mixture of different subcategories, different topics, just to make it a little more complex, but guess what? Not completely new. So ask yourself, have you seen a similar problem? Is it a special case? Maybe you've worked with even numbers before and this one is odd numbers. It, is there any information that you can actually pull outside, right? So for example, if the problem is all under that large topic where they first introduced, let's say quadratic, right? Then guess what? The problem is probably somehow related to quadratic, maybe quadratic formula or whatsoever. The position of that problem in relation to the math textbook can play a huge role. You just need a plan of approach to solving the problem. Once you have that completely detailed, that's when you finally are able to move on to the second phase. So let's look at phase two. So phase two, execute the plan. Hopefully at this point you realize this is actually one of the most simple phases in this four step of problem solving, right? You have your plan, you created it, you spent a great deal of time in phase one making every single way of understanding and approaches. Well, then you follow through, right? If this is the way you're gonna tackle the problem, you just go about it. You try to get through from beginning to end whatever you decided. If it's a simple step-by-step -step, uh, solving for a variable, then you're gonna go through that. If it's trying to find a missing information first and then using that information to solve the bigger problem, then you go through that. You just follow through with the plan, plain and simple, right? And then, at this point, you start moving on to phase three while you are executing the plan. So what is phase three? 
All right, phase three, expect the plan to go off the rails. Now, what does that mean? Well, guess what? As detailed as we are, as amazing as we are, as comprehensive in terms of our planning, our foreshadowing that we believe we are, plans don't always go that way, right? So you always have to have the mentality to expect the plan to go off the rails, right? This is your approach, but it leads you to something completely different. You did not expect to go that path or you were trying to find that missing information and it didn't work. That approach didn't work. Now you have to find another way to find that missing information or maybe there's no way of going about it. Now I got to go to a different approach to find the actual answer. There's a lot of things that could go on that we just did not plan for when we were creating our actual plan. So when you expect the plan to go off the rails, you have to ask yourself, do you follow the plan all the way through? Guess what? We sometimes have a tendency to skip steps, not on purpose, but it happens. So did we follow all the way through? Did we accidentally skip any step or do we purposely skip any step? Why did we skip it if we purposely did, right? What else is there? Did that answer make sense? Guess what? You can follow the plan all the way through and maybe there's a mistake somewhere, right? If you're, for example, adding two very large positive number and your answer ends up being negative, guess what? It doesn't really make sense. So you have to ask yourself that question. Did the final answer make sense? Guess what? Even if it did make sense, even if everything is correct, is it useful? Is this something that I should remember in the future? Because as I start studying more and more complex math, they're always going to be built on each other. So maybe this end result is something that I should just commit into memory. There's so many things that you have to consider. So while plan is lovely, it gives you a way of approaching and solving a problem. Just expect it to go off the rails. Now, once that happens, guess what? We move on to phase four. All right, so phase four, throw away the plan. Now, what does that mean? That means, guess what? In phase three, when you are expecting the plan to go off the rails, it did. The information you were expecting to get, it did not show up, right? Maybe that approach was wrong. Maybe you couldn't get that information at all and you have to take a completely different route to eventually solve the problem. It's just not working. You're hitting dead ends, you're hitting roadblocks. So what do you do? You throw away the plan because guess what? Just because you hit that roadblock, just because your plan didn't work, it's not a question about your ability. It's not about whether you're smart or not. It's not about whether you can calculate stuff fast or not. It's not about whether you can memorize a thousand formulas and know how to use it or not. It's none of that, right? It just means that the current plan you're trying to use to solve that problem sucked. Plain and simple. That's all it is. So if that's the case, what can you do? you come up with a new plan. So when you hit this and you realize your plan doesn't work anymore, right? Well, it, it's of no use to you. So you throw it away. So you go straight back to number one. You make the plan again. Then you go to number two, you execute the plan. Then number three, you expect it to go off the rails. And guess what? If you're unlucky, boom, number four, throw away the plan again. Make another one, right? Execute it and then expect it to go off the rails. And eventually, guess what? Sometimes problems take a long time. There are problems that took months, years. Of course, hopefully, whatever it is that you're trying to solve, whether it's for homework or for a test, it doesn't take you that long because you have a time limit. But the idea is that you have to be persistent. And eventually, you hit phase one, you hit phase two, and then you hit phase three, but you never hit phase four because even though you expect the plan to go off the rails in phase three, it didn't. Everything worked out. Well, guess what? There's still that one question that I brought up in phase three. Is this something I should memorize? Because guess what? In the future, I might see a similar problem or exactly the same problem. But once you hit phase three and you realize you completely solved that problem, you don't need to move on to this anymore. Understand that this is not a mandatory phase, but one that eventually, once you get there, it means just to go back. And once you solve the problem exactly, you're great. If not, then throw away the plan. Your plan sucked, make a new plan. Keep in mind that we're not lacking ability. We're always just lacking another plan, another idea. So that's all it is. So that's the four stages of problem solving that are related to, well, guess what? Like I said, the TV quote that I presented in the beginning of the video, one of my favorite. If you guys figured out where it came from, great. Leave it in the comment section or at least, you know, share it around. If you haven't, feel free to Google it because I just think that kind of mentality, that kind of approach on planning, on problem solving is just amazing. Anyways, hopefully I haven't rambled too much where you guys are just completely sick of hearing my voice. If you find this video at least entertaining or whatsoever, please like, comment, and subscribe. 
I will see you in the next video.